All right. Hi, everyone. We are back. Thank you, beautiful people, for being here with us again. And today, I'm really excited once more to be talking to Paulina Howfield, part two of our conversation, because there's so much to talk about with Paulina. She has so much experience and wisdom, and I can't wait to dive in. Paulina, let's see. Well, I was thinking of... Um, just having people read your bio because was, we already did a uh, had a conversation below mm -hmm. and then also uh, share the link for your first video that way people can look and see um, what you're all about but if you could just quickly share a little bit of, about um, what you do for the in service to the planet and that type of thing okay yeah and thanks for having me back and for part two uh, it's uh, really nice to be here and hello everybody um Oh, it's a it's kind of many layered of, for me about what I what I do because it's about service to humanity, but it's also about service to the earth and it's about service to our developing galactic consciousness. So um, having had, which I said in the first bit, having had the NDE, which was really um, an essence of uh, deep remembering what I came to do uh, and moving on from there into in the consciousness, how do I best do what I what I came to do, and the frequency work, and so I connect in with the soul of the earth. I can um, I'm an, um, a medium and clairvoyant and um, a telepathic, empathic uh, sort of um, ways of interacting and connecting in, and so there's. A lot of that involved in the work that I do, whether it's helping, and I'm also uh, trained in different, uh, I guess, mainstream methods of psychotherapy and art therapy, but also soul therapy and transpersonal psychology. And so quite different, some mainstream, but some quite esoteric stuff as well. In mm -hmm. fact, more esoteric. Um, and so I combine those skills to help individuals and to help groups and I also work with the land and with land healing and help people clear energies often get called actually from people in in the last couple of years from people on the east coast of America mm. and they're cleaning out or or wanting to live on land that has the older templates from say the 1770s that are um, they're not able to move so I often help with that um, and I work with ley lines and I work with um, sacred geometry and uh, the visionary geography on the planet to assist in the awakening of humanity and the ascension process and the um, development in each of us of our galactic conscious and awareness. Awesome. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a lot. So I have to ask you real quickly. So the template of the 1770s, can you, can you share a little bit about what that's about on the East Coast and what you're finding with that? Um, sure. Well, uh, the it's not just the 1770s, but the, um, when you think of your the history in uh, North America, when it, there were settlers coming in uh, from other countries, uh, so from the UK, from Europe, Germany, Holland, with them um, came a different energy frequency and a different energy template. And that was um, placed on the land. And it was also um, imbued into the frequencies of the, of the energy templates that were there. Mm. Of course, the cultural aspects within the country changed. Uh, there were also, and that's happened everywhere. It's not just happened on the east coast of America. Sure. It's happened all over the world. Okay. Uh, but so, as people are um, becoming more aware of things like feng shui or feng shui and space clearing and healing and ghosts and what's happening in their their land, they're starting to realize that there are unsettled spirits for one thing from that time. Um, I've worked on islands where there were um, massacres and uh, major violent things happened. Uh, so there's that aspect of helping to clear that and also to uh, enable the frequency of the divine feminine to step forward. So what that means really is 
we can balance all the um, paradigms of the past of polarization between male and female, white, black, um, anything and everything. You can, it, like, it's easy to think of all the isms and schisms that have happened in, right. in the past. Um, so it's about helping to heal that. It's also people wanting to live in more harmony with the land. So they're not, they don't just want to clear the ghosts and I help them do that, but it's about if you're going to build on land or if there is land already and you're going to um, say uh, rebuild in the building that you already have, uh, mm -hmm. renovate or something like that, then you want to do it in harmony with the earth energies and the divic energies that are there and the angelic resonance, bring the resonances of the angels in and the ray masters. So it's, it's, it's about that and that 70, uh, 1770s in the eastern seaboard, I guess, of the US, there was a lot of um, trauma and a lot of profound change in a very quick time. And that's what I find around the planet with um, places that I work with. In a time when there's been profound change, similar to what we're experiencing now, <laughs> profound mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. that um, there's a lot of uh, unresolved things that uh, if we don't resolve them, they become a part of the future template. Okay. All right. Definitely. Uh, that reminds me of when I moved back home to Oregon and moved on to my dad's land. He had passed and I moved on to his land to take care of it and um, do what I needed to do with that for the family. There was there was a feeling of uh, sorrow and sadness on the land, not just grief from my dad, but also mm -hmm. that was on the land. I felt um, from uh, from Native American days or something. <clears throat> so we did do a ceremony to help clear that and help bring up the energy from that space. Um, so yeah, that, I, I really love what you're what you're talking about and what you do. That's so important. So I think that and would you agree that if people maybe move on to a property or something like that, or or um, are living on a property where they they might not be feeling balanced or or um, things come up that negative um, type of emotions and things like that, they don't know where they're coming from. Would that be could that be something from from the the land? What's going on with the land? Uh, yes, it could be. I mean, it could be imprints from past things that have happened there. It could also be underground water supplies. Mm. Um, they play, they can play havoc with our bodies. Uh, so there's many things that are um, part of it. And also disgruntled spirits. Or there's a lot of research, I guess, since the 1970s in what's now called cryptids, um, which things like um, uh, chupacabras and... Uh, mm -hmm bunyips and yetis aren't in that category but that that sort of sense of beings that people don't really know what they are and what they do and they can they have an imprint and an energy that you feel around you and as we become more aware of these frequencies and more aware of the environments that we live in and the interconnectedness of everything we become really sensitive to um from the Yeti, which are larger presences, although they're often very subtle, high frequency presences, um, down to you know ants and, and the, the impact that ants have on us, whether, um, and I'm not talking about ants coming in the kitchen and eating the sugar and the honey, I'm talking about ants in the sense of if, they're, if there's underground tunnels of ants, you can feel that. It's like the more mm. subtle the frequencies are, we start to become aware of those. And so, the more we can become aware that we're in a living environment and we mm -hmm. are part of that living environment, we can start to recognize that sometimes if we're not feeling okay or if we're feeling a bit scattered or if we're just feeling maybe exhausted all the time or even having a run of unexpected anxiety or something, it may be because the environment around us is mirroring something back to us that we can understand and learn from and help to balance okay yeah like in you. um uh scandinavian countries they still to this day communicate with the um 
trolls and uh, other beings mm -hmm. to establish, like if they're going to put a road through, they establish. And if they, if the, if those beings say no, people listen to them and they divert it. And and in um, in earth-based cultures, they've always done that. But in the Western way of doing things, it's like we're putting a road there and we're knocking that tree down, and it's an ancient tree often. Mm -hmm. um, we're knocking that down and we're diverting that river over there and we're burning through here and we're cutting up there and all the divic world is going hang on a second we're here don't forget we're here yeah we've lost touch with that in the western world definitely yeah, yeah. so um i'm sure you i would hope to, I'm, I'm sure you would agree that as we move up in frequency and we're going through this big huge shift we're getting more in touch with that yes Right, yes, that's... and I've noticed in the last couple of years, more people have suddenly realized that this um, there's other frequencies going on and that the earth is living and that um, uh, by us paying attention to our frequencies, we begin to work with the other frequencies as well. It's like we're all interconnected mm -hmm. and, and as the frequencies lift, the impulse is to become aware of that. Right. So um, with uh, and now in our last video or chat, we talked about galactic consciousness, right? And that you were made aware of that during your near-death experience, correct? Yeah. Well, I mean, in truth, I think I'd always been aware of galactic consciousness, but I wouldn't have said it that way. Oh, and, okay. And, and I think that's what the NDE really did was um, clarified that what I had come in with an understanding of was true. And then over the period of integration, which happens in any of those kind of um, transformative experiences, and, and, then, and then over the years, it's like, yes, those things were true. So now um, as, as my frequencies would lift as well, you know, you start doing the work in, in different ways, it's like more and more becomes available and accessible. And so um, part of this whole process of remembering that we're on uh, so, and um, cosmic memory is really important. And that's what um, was, I was reminded of in the NDE was that um, many of the past lives, uh, so I already knew that past lives existed. I already knew a lot of the stuff as in like I believed it to be true, but I needed to be a conscious participant in that so that I could do the work um, on a level that would establish me doing what I came to do, so to speak. And so with um, galactic consciousness, it's about remembering that we come from the stars. And that was a profound thing in the NDE. It was like, we are from the stars and we're not, made, we're, we're not matter. We're, we're only matter in production, if that makes sense. So it's how the elements come together that create the matter. Um, and we're, we come from the stars, but we're also currently born from the earth. And so there's this inter, intergalactic relationship. And in, the, in our bodies is the memory of that. It's in our DNA and it's in our subtle bodies. And in the earth is the memory of that. It's in her DNA, it's in her subtle bodies, it's in her energy stamps on the earth. And so everything that's ever happened on the planet is in some way recorded on her body. Mm. And we can find places where our galactic um, forebears have visited, they've left their energetic stance. But what also happens is the stories and the mythical archetypal stories that have gone around the cultures in the world, they are keys to understanding our galactic consciousness. And they help us connecting with the Ray Masters, they help us connecting with the angelic beings, they help us connecting with the Divic energies. But I guess the fundamental thing as well is they help us to remember who we are, where we came from, why we're here and how to develop our galactic consciousness. Because ho Earth is our home, our physical home, which is a galactic body. Yeah. 
say that again. You cut out just a tiny bit there. You said Earth physical is Earth our, is our home. Physical okay. home, but she's also a galactic body. Okay. And so she's a great anchor point, but also a great gateway portal to understanding our sense of galactic consciousness and who we are in relationship to the Earth and who we are in relationship to the cosmos. Because often people, when they start the galactic work, they become very, for want of a better term, airy fairy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't, they lose touch with the ground, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they become very connected to the stars and other galaxies, and it's very lovely. But predominantly, the Earth is about staying grounded and realizing we are connected to her and we are a galactic body as she is right and if you like transcending together and ascending yeah. together right like she has in her um consciousness that willingness to bring all of us with her right. she doesn't kick us off she doesn't kill us off she doesn't yeah do any of those things that's like she is like come and a lot of what's happening on the planet and has been happening on the planet for at least 50 years and if not longer is this changing frequency and the you know we can see it in the astrological patterns of how um, the planets in the cosmos and the celestial planets are affecting our energies and helping us to wake up and the earth is helping us to wake up. And I'm not talking about the woke wake up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about a spiritual awakening, a galactic awakening. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, a, it's a different thing. Um, and that's been a, a cosmic agenda for a long time, that our human species would be part of it and we wouldn't be um, living in that forgetfulness that, that the general populace has been living in for a long time. Yeah, that um, that makes total sense. So it's basically all about balance, right? Because I know that when I first started waking up or when I had my quickening and was way out there, I it, it was difficult for me because I did for, would forget to ground. I would be out yeah. here, you know, with all, all this and everything like that and, and um, communicating with galactic beings, ascended masters and all that. And I would forget to ground. And they would remind me, but I'm like, but I don't want to ground. I want to be up here with you, you know? <laughs> so it's so important. I know. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too. It's like, we do want to be with them, but the point of it is they're in us anyway. So we don't have to be off in, we are in the stars. We right. are in the galaxies just by being who we are. So we don't actually have to leave the body to be there. It's, and that's about bringing that in and infusing it in the body so that we are galactic beings and galactic consciousness presenting itself, transitioning from 3D form to other, mm -hmm. but walking with care and concern and integrity on the earth. And if we're off in the stars, we're not fully able to do that, are we? No, we're not. Things go wrong in, in here because we're here for a reason and it's hard to, to I, I found, and, I, and I'm sure you work with people too, have a hard time grounding um, with, especially with what's going on with frequencies, you know, being ramped up and <clears throat> excuse me, things like that. So sometimes people forget to, to stay grounded. Yes. And I think also there's a choice that people make. It may not be a deliberate conscious choice, but an unconscious choice to not be present because if they don't like what they're present in, better yeah. to be not here than to be present. And yet it is in the being present and the recognition of all of the things that are going on and the shadow and the cleansing and all of that, that mm -hmm. makes, that is the transition point, isn't it? It's like it's sure. by being present in the moment, there isn't a past, there isn't a future, there is now and in this moment what exists in this moment and for me in this moment is a body breathing and everything else going on in the body and okay there's 
noises and things like that. But but in the physical nowness, there is only now. Mm -hmm. And that's all there is. But the Western world lives in the past or in the future, but very rarely in the now. Right. I was in a, um, that reminds me, I was in a, a plant medicine ceremony a few years ago. And it, during the ceremony, I had this um, strong, um, it was pr profound for me. Whenever I would think about the past, I would get nauseous, feel sick. Whenever okay. I would think about the future, I would get anxious, real anxious. And when I was in, in the present, I was calm, I was peaceful. And that told me so much. That was grandfather teaching me, this is what it, just like what you, just what you said right there, this is all that's real. The rest causes, when we're back here or up there, it causes so many um, issues. Yeah, that's profound teaching, isn't it? From mm -hmm. What a blessing. And, uh, <laughs> Definitely. And, and it really, it, it also, if we're ever not in the body and then we are in the body, there's a great difference of feeling about that. And I'm someone who's been tethered to the earth like I'm grounded. Mm -hmm. But I'm also reaching high frequencies. And I think that's also partly what the... NDE was about was to recognize that 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 is part of my, my gift or skill set really is to be really out there but also be really present here um and so for me uh i don't have some of the issues that other people have um and and i help people bring their energies back in you know often when they've had trauma or just in their day-to-day -day life but knowing it like in your capacity with the work, the people that you work with, that's also a profound teaching, isn't it? To help them understand that you can access those other realms, but still stay in balance. Right. So important, especially nowadays. So important. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Paulina. That's, that's beautiful. Um, thank you. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit earlier and I would love to hear about your experiences with the, um, the tall Pleiadians. Okay. So I have, um, interactions with all different sorts of beings. Um, and some of them are physical and some of them are energetic and some of them are telepathic. Um, and with the tall Pleiadians, they, um, there's firstly, there's a lot of sites on the earth that, have been infused by the Pleiadian energy from visitations from um, the Hyperboreans who are part of the Pleiadian genetic line, if you like. Um, so, what, I'm uh, sorry, what did you call them? What? The uh, Hyperboreans. So, the Hyperboreans, okay. Yeah. And um, so, they, uh, the, the Pleiadians are closely connected to humanity mm -hmm. and they work on particular frequencies as all of the beings do and the tall Pleiadians that I have um, connection with um, tend to be lighter skinned and they um, appear as humanoid but they can also appear non-humanoid it depends on the situation um, but so in certain places uh, I would be asked to work with them to infuse energies in the earth or to help balance and change frequencies or sometimes just enable a portal to be better working. So an example of that would be in a place in the US, <coughs> excuse me, um, at, a, at an old ruin. I was um, walking around the ruin and I was called there psychically, so I kind of knew there was a reason for being there, apart from the fact it was an interesting ruin. And um, underneath the ruins, um, and like before the buildings were placed there, uh, there was a, an entrance point from the inner earth, but also from the stars. And so they needed the portal to be energized and working 
<coughs> excuse me, energized and working so that the tall Pleiadians could come in and leave and come in and leave and, mm. and spend their time on the earth and then go on and do that. And one would say, well, if they're higher frequency than us and they're more skilled than us, they should be able to do that themselves. <laughs> um, and I often get people say, oh, but if they, like if UFOs are landing and crash landing and they've got that equipment, how come they're crash landing and why they, um, why can't they just fix it themselves? And yeah. so it's, that's what's fascinating to me. It's like we're in that interconnected relationship. And so if I'm asked to do something, I'll do it to the best of my ability and help in whatever way I can. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't just ask anybody and everybody. Right. Because they pick their, they pick and choose according to what they know people can and cannot do. And so the tall Pleiadians would then, ha ha then had access to come in and go from that, and that enabled them to make the connections with their planets and their other beings, and also um, shift the frequency in the Earth itself. And so Pleiadian sites around the planet will have a particular energy about them and the more i've worked with them over the years the more i start to understand what those frequencies are and how that feels in my subtle bodies mm -hmm. um what it may make me remember or remind me of and any color frequencies or the different ray masters who work with those particular beings the different angels that work with those different beings, the different elemental guardians that work. So, so there's many layers of recognizing that, plus the symbols. Right. And um, the tall Pleiadians, in my experiences, are quite involved in a lot of things that are going on on the planet right now because it's about the love frequency. Right. So, so let me ask you this. So you went to that portal and did something to enable, to fix the portal, <laughs> I guess you could yeah. say, to enable them to use it again. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Can you share a little bit about how you did that? Well, um, I was just one aspect of that. There were others okay. involved. So that's important to say uh, because I work in a community <laughs> and um, Sometimes I get asked to do things and I go, are you sure you mean you want me to do that? Are you sure it's me you want me to do that? But generally it's like a, it's a community thing. And so um, we gathered at this particular place. We made sure we fully established what wasn't working in it, why it wasn't working properly. Um, and portals have... Um, have an energy frequency and an energy pattern and um you know sometimes the energy will go up sometimes it will go down sometimes it will spin there's all different ways that portals work so it's about establishing how that particular portal worked because sometimes people assume that one fit size fits all that's that left brain way of saying well we've established that portals work this way but actually they can work any way they are and i think Again, that's where the beings trust me. It's like I don't have that sense of an assumption. It's like, let's just explore this for how it is now and see what's going on rather than, well, this portal's always worked this way. Well, actually, it just works how it's doing it right now. Gotcha. Um, so looking at that, um, establishing what um, may be blocking it, establishing any damage that's been done to it, establishing any... Um, beings that may be trapped in it mm. um, and also any influences that have disturbed it either unconsciously or consciously and deliberately. What did you find um, out in that area? Do you oh, they had been that? Uh, it had been deliberately sabotaged, let's say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the case in many places on the planet. They've right. been deliberately sabotaged and that's also been an aspect of what I've been involved in for the last number of decades is that um, certain places were deliberately shut down and, and sometimes rightly so because it was to stabilise energies that had gone out. You know when the, 
um, talk about Atlantis and they talk about um, the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that is um, a crystal that it was, a, it was a device that was damaged. Mm. And that had to be shut down as best as possible because it just went haywire. Um, so that's an extreme example of people working with energies and damaging them and then others coming in to fix them. But that's kind of what's been happening with this raising of the divine consciousness and earth energies and remembering is that some sites were deactivated deliberately and other sites were put on hold deliberately. And then other sites just went out of balance from um, just natural things that happen. You know, like earthquakes mm. and uh, volcanoes erupting over the earth. Right. That's like what level of steam. Mm -hmm. But they're not necessarily a bad thing. It's like a valve goes off. And in our own bodies, we have to, you know, we have to get the energy balanced, don't we? You know, we might right. have to send it up through the crown chakra or send it down through the lower chakras or um, bring it in or take it out. You know, it, it, it's energy moves. Move. It has to be moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If it's not moving, yeah. we're in trouble. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if that explained enough in the in the sense of the portal and the Pleiades, but it, it's like working with them and like who's managing what. And and this is what I really like about the Vedic world and the angelic world and the Ray Masters world. If it's not their portfolio, they don't they don't fake it till they make it. And a lot of in the last 30 years, humans have become very um they'll jump in sometimes where they don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. or they'll fake it till they make it <laughs> and um what that means is uh i think that feeds the narcissistic behavior for one thing but what it also means is that people unwittingly do things that they actually don't know what they're doing and that can cause well, and I work with um, elders yeah. in different places, in different countries, and mm -hmm. I've been invited on different situations to go in and help them fix what other people had done unwittingly. Yeah. So it's always done with intention and, and good intention. Well, it's not always done, but you know, most of the time, the people right. who are unwittingly doing damage, they're doing it with good intention. But unlike the... Um, Deity guardians who will always say, oh, I don't know about that, I'll ask, or um, no, we can't do that at this time. Uh, hum humans sometimes will go fake it till we make it, and I don't understand what I'm doing, but I know I need to do that. And it's tricky, isn't it? Because there's an aspect yeah. of that that's really about trusting intuition. Yes, you know that, I didn't think about that till you brought it up just now, is that you're right, Western society has a hard time admitting, <laughs> well, you know, um, I don't really know how to do that. Let me, let me send you to someone that does or find out for you or something like that. But we're, we're become kind of a take, such a take, take, take society that, um, and like you said, narcissistic, well, yeah, that's, um, that's interesting. Yeah, and, and I think that's why it's really interesting as a form of reconnecting in with the earth because a lot of people will, and, and frequencies, because a lot of people will say, well, I've got a mortgage to pay or I've got this to yeah. do, I've got that to do. Why is all this other stuff important? It's not. But that's how we used to live. You know, as a species, we were strongly connected to everything. Um, and we've become more and more separate. And in that more and more separate, we've become less and less aware, less and less capable of recognizing that uh, being in the moment, but also that sense of um, in deep connection, it's a community and in deep connection, it's not about mistakes, it's about learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no quick fix it. 
I mean, there is a quick fix it. You know, if you've got a broken thing and you can fix it, you fixed it. But but the Western world lives as if we're the superior. We've got the answers to everything. <laughs> um, and it it's it's damaging our lives. Mm -hmm. It's damaging our planet as well. But it, it's damaging our lives because we're so separated from the truth of who we are. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been going on for a long time, and that's why we are the way we yeah. are. Keeping up with the Joneses, working the eight to five, you know, trying to pay a mortgage, um, being in debt up to your ears, and um, being stressed out, that type of thing, and not taking the time or having the time for our nurturing our spiritual growth, which is so important. Should, like you said, it should be it's part of the whole thing. And that's what keeps us in connection to, well, to um, the infinite intelligence, who we are <laughs> within us, the God within us and humanity and the, all the beings on the planet, the earth and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's fascinating to me in the last couple of years, it's, I mean, it's gone on longer than that, but uh, right. um, when People will, for a long time, people said they never had any time to do anything. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't have time. I, I've got to make time. And yet the Western world has actually created a whole load of things in the world in order to save time. Because um, that's what, uh, that's how technology works, really. It's about giving more and more time. Right. If, but we know time's an illusion. But, you know, in the mm -hmm. sense of those things, it's like, well, you can now turn your washing machine on while you're driving home in the traffic, you know, so you don't have to do it when you, there's a whole load of really time saving and turn your oven on and all sorts of stuff. Wow. Um, I so did not know that. <laughs> there's all these time, time saving devices, Yeah. but humans don't know what to do with their time. And when they have time, they distract themselves. Distractions. So that they don't have to spend time in the now. And in the last two years, we've had people have had so much time yeah. to, you know, people can't go to work, um, people can't do their usual life. They've had more time, but they've found it really, really difficult because the distractions have been so valuable in the last 20 years of separating people from their truth mm -hmm. that when faced with their truth, they want a distraction. I mean, I know that sounds a bit, um simplistic and and probably also a bit harsh i'm not trying to be harsh or simplistic but it's interesting how we keep co-creating these cycles because we're trying to get ourselves back on track right yeah yes um every every uh, how do i say it? every negative has a positive and yeah. uh, every positive probably has, you know, has some kind of a negative to it. So we're, it's just all about balance, light and dark. Yep. And you know, the, the 3D world is polarized. It's about the light or the dark, but we're moving and transitioning towards the lack of polarity. But as mm -hmm. you can see in the world now, mm -hmm. polarization is everywhere. Right. <laughs> you know, it's uh, absolutely everywhere. And that's that coming up for healing. Right. But it's yes. hard. Because right. We didn't I didn't address it before and we didn't address it before and we didn't address it before. And now it's in everyone's face. Now it's here. It's the dark night of the soul. You always say humanity is now going through the dark night of the soul. Her dark night of the soul, our dark night of the soul. So now we can't ignore something that can't ignore it because it's been there just like when we do our personal work. Yeah. If we don't do it, if we keep uh, going through our day with, with repressing, 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 not paying attention, not paying attention sooner or later, it's coming to the surface and we have to, we have to do something yeah. about it. Jung used to say, you know, the, the, the psyche um, gives us opportunities and keeps knocking on the door. And if we don't listen, eventually it hits us on the head. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, my, that's what my dad used to say all the time. Yeah. And <laughs> Although it, he added a two by four to it. Uh, wise man, your dad. So yeah, <laughs> it, um, it, it does work that way. And I, I used to spend about three months every year in Sedona and I'd do stuff with the earth energies and I'd uh, run some workshops 
blah, blah, blah. And um, I was fascinated in the times that I would go to Sedona, the, um, the people who would go there and sometimes people had been wanting to go to Sedona for years and years and they just haven't had the, haven't had the opportunity. Um, and that was a genuine lack of opportunity. And then as soon as it came forward, they went. Other people mm -hmm. had felt the call to go to Sedona for years, but just hadn't gone. The people in that category, they, it was like the universe had been giving them clues, giving them clues, giving them clues. And then when they arrived in Sedona, something happened and it was invariably the legs, mm. so legs, feet, knees, they'd Moving break forward. a foot, they'd break their knee uh, or damage their knee or something. I, I was fascinated by how many people I saw and met who had been, who had been there less than a few days. And sometimes they'd only had, they'd only have a week there and they spent half of it in hospital or in a cast. And they wow. took the past home with them because, you know, they damaged enough or people who moved there and then had something that happened. And it's, I mean, firstly, Sedona, as you would know, has different frequencies and it's, mm -hmm. and, um, it's a, a very interesting place energetically. So it's going to um, impulse you, if you like, to really get on track. And it's also going to impulse you to remember your past lives. And it's a bit like going into extreme past life therapy there um, for certain people. It's like if you haven't done any past life therapy work, you're going to do it in the time you're there because it's all going to come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, love that word impulse. That's a good word to use for being in high frequency zones. <laughs> yeah, because they're just they're pulsing all the right. time. And, you know, people think that, uh, things don't communicate because they don't speak like you and I do, but they're pulsing all the time. And that's their form of communication often. That's to some degree how um, clairvoyant and psychic energy works and how tele telepathy works. It's like mm -hmm. it pulses. It's the vibration that's boom, boom, boom. I mean, that's the heartbeat too, isn't it? So, yes. You know, everything is a pulsing vibration and it impulses us all the time. We get impulsed by the moon impulsed by the sun everything nice it, well we're yes and as we're speaking we're impulsing aren't we i mean our words are a vibration absolutely we're speaking we're and we're also communicating like you said telepathically so we're impulsing um yeah that's um yeah and that's how um intuition works as well isn't it it's that impulse that vibration that we go okay something's happening here or we feel something that's mm -hmm. that quality of vibration and frequency because that's the kind of world we live in and our um, communication is predominantly nonverbal, but right we act like it's all about words right I, I read a study or my guys told me I can't remember it was somewhere in my consciousness where verbal communication or physical and verbal communication is uh, less than one percent of how we are communicating yeah that's and that's why I found um apart from the healing and the energy work but art therapy was a really good thing for me to do because it's a natural way for me and it's also really good for helping people who um are non-verbal and I and and every one of us is non-verbal because we were born predominantly non-verbal you know we're, mm -hmm. we're we're tuning in all the time but we we did, most of us didn't have words when we were born. We had sounds, we didn't have words. And so the first four to five years while language is still being developed, there's a whole load of emotional stuff that goes on for all of us in that period of time. Mm -hmm. And if we're a feeling oriented person, that's always with us. It never really goes away. Uh, and it doesn't go away for anybody, but if you're predominantly feeling oriented, that's your way of engaging in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's that, because it's about, um, nonverbal ways of communicating, nonverbal ways of being in the world, how you connect in with the other worlds. It's just layer after layer of taking words out of the equation. Right. Words are clumsy, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so would you agree that we are becoming more and more telepathic? It's, 
as long as we're doing our stuff, but even if, you know, we're not, I mean, things are, we're, I know for myself and people in my circles, we will be communicating telepathically before we even speak. And I'm sure we have here and before we even talk and verbalize it. <laughs> and I mean, I, it, it's happening more and more I'm finding. What about you? Yes. Yes, I, I agree. And I also, I also think that, um, because we're natural, we are naturally telepathic. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, it's treated as an idiosyncrasy or some weird thing. But, uh, you know, like intuition is treated that way. But all of these things are actually part of our innate process of being human. We just lost lost it. Um, and right. and I, I think it's also really interesting in the um, Eastern ways of, of, I guess, spiritual uh, understanding and learning and that that um, sense of in the who am I if we're not my body if I'm not my body and if I'm not my um, thoughts and I'm not my emotions who am I in that quiet space for me that comes with that is the watching the thoughts bubble up watching the emotions bubble up and 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 that doesn't say they're my emotions and they're my thoughts but that's right. connected to that telepathic. It's like the clearer we are, you see the thoughts you, and you hear the thoughts and you feel the thoughts and they don't have to be said. Mm -hmm. But then also there is a, um, a voice, isn't there, to, to, the, to that tele, telepathy uh, and, and, and often an accent. Like I often hear it in an accent or I hear it in a... A sex like a male or a female mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I'll hear it at a particular frequency so there's um we are becoming more and more of that and as we're becoming more aware of that the process then is to refine it more isn't it everything's always about growth I think you know the, the universe and the world is always about growth it expands and then I guess it comes back on in itself but at the moment yes. we're doing it that <laughs> expansion right I like what you said about um your inner voice having a accent because I have heard some of my inner voices having a an accent and there's one fe uh, feminine inner voice of mine that I, I recall a, a um existence and she when I when I'm bringing her in her name is hers and Thena when I'm bringing her in I I have I feel this uh, difference in my demeanor and she has dimples really deep dimples when she smiles and I feel like I have dimples and I she's very um, uh, coy is the word that comes to mind but she's a lot more feminine <laughs> I guess you can say than me and uh just there's this different demeanor with her and she speaks when I do hear words from her it's usually not in words it's just a energy and a, and a feeling she speaks with a uh, an accent or a dialect or something that's very different than mine so are you channeling her is that what you're doing well um not not at the moment not consciously but when I connect to her I mean, I can channel her, yeah. uh, but when I connect to her consciously, my demeanor just told my, changes. it changes. Mm. Yeah. And, and when I hear her speaking to me in my mind without speaking it, but I, when I do channel it, my voice does change, but mm. uh, when, I, when she's speaking in my mind, uh, I am, um, she's speaking to me in an accent or speaking in an accent. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, they, um, but, weird. yeah, if there's an accent that's um, part of them, that will come forward in the information, won't it? And like uh, I, um, I've worked a lot with pixies in my life, and uh, um, pixies are often spoken of as um, oh, the word sneaky comes to mind, but I don't think of them as sneaky. Like they're practical jokes, or they'll mischievous. Mischievous, thank you. Yes, I. <laughs> Yeah, but, yes. but the ones that I've been involved with aren't like that. Um, that but they they love they speak with an Irish accent. So, no, you know, they speak with an Irish accent and they sing and they jig. They do a lot of jigging, a lot of yes, dance. I've seen them. Um, 
but they're not mischievous with me. Now that doesn't mean they're not mischievous with other people, but they're not mischievous with me. Um, but they're I know when they're around because uh, when when they first started coming around, I'd know because I'd hear the music and I'd hear um, the thing. And then there'd be this diddly 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 d kind of thing going, you know, to be sure, to be sure. Um, and and yet there's another um, uh, being who I connect with who he's got a strong almost like a Belfast um, Irish accent. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's also fascinating as well. You, you know, where it leaves us in relation to um, multiple personality disorders, <laughs> we will see with that. <laughs> but, um, Too late for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. ship has sailed. <laughs> yeah. We're there. <laughs> and we know that we're, that's uh, said as a joke, not as a... Um, oh, I know. Anything yeah. else. Uh, so, um, <laughs> but there, there is a different, and there's a different energy, and it's very, very subtle sometimes, and other times it's like so, so obvious that you couldn't, you could not mistake it for anything else. And like trans channelers, as you know, when they, mm -hmm. when, when that energy comes in, it's a very different energy that is present in that form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. different way of speaking a different way of breathing the body shakes on a different form and I've seen elders who've been in quite elderly bodies and when they're not working if you like or well, they might be working but not in this stage of, not in this state of like being being in front of people working they're sort of just sitting there looking maybe um a shell of themselves but when they're working they're on and this energy is coming through and it's a completely different persona mm -hmm. fills them up i love channeling it fills fills me up with light with uh, higher energy yeah i love it <laughs> i yeah. love channeling galactic beings and cosmic beings and higher beings so who's your favorite galactic being to bring through oh gosh um well, Sananda. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Right, right. But I've been uh, recently working with the whales and dolphin energy. Mm. And, I, and they've been coming through in my channels lately and with people. Yes. And I love that energy. That's, uh, I yes. mean, That's I, I can't pick a favorite, but yeah. the whale and dolphin energy is coming. The cetaceans and the dolphins have been coming through, and I just love that energy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Dolphin energy is lovely when it comes. I mean, they all are. Um, and uh, um, when I was in Malta years ago, working with the goddess temples there, the dolphin energy would come through a lot because it's that psychopomp and it's quite strongly connected to Syrian energy as well mm -hmm. and the love frequency. So it would come forward a lot. I was like, oh, this is lovely. <laughs> yes. <sighs> So you are um, also aware of our galactic heritage in, in some way, right? Mm -hmm. Can you share your wisdom with us on, on what, what you've become aware of? Um, so my understanding of the galactic heritage is that, you know, firstly, we're made from the stars and it's inherent in us. And so part of the journey is really to remember it. Okay. And that's why working with the earth is um or interacting with the earth and the soul consciousness of the earth and the and the templates on the that are, exist in the earth is really helpful because that's a they are all stories about our galactic heritage. So um, within our DNA we have and within our blood we have our heritage. Right. Um, you know, many people relate it to the RH negative, but actually with all our blood types, we have our heritage in our blood, in our DNA. And uh, that, I believe, is why they do the ancestry stuff, because they're looking for our heritage. Apart mm. from other things, that's one of the things they're looking for. Um, so, For what reason would you, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Paulina, but for what reason would you think, would you, do you feel... That that I think it's a combination of things. I think, firstly, um, it, it, mm, going into territory that's. Uh, oh, um, okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy to go. I'll, I'll go there, but we may take yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, 
but the um, our galactic heritage shows up in our blood and shows up in um, I think our saliva as well, but definitely in our blood and our DNA. And so in the process of trying to establish who humanity is and what we know and what we don't know, it's better for, that they can get that and also what illnesses will predominate people, but they want to have an understanding of who's who and what's what on the planet. Okay. Within yeah. what's going on now currently. That's, so that's the last what I 10, figured. Yeah. yeah. So in the last 10, 15 years, as you will have noticed, um, people have been encouraged to go and get their genetic patterning done. Yeah. Came out Quite of nowhere mm -hmm. and took off like wildfire mm -hmm. under the guise of establishing um, who your granddaddy's granddaddy's granddaddy was. Right. Searching your so ancestry. Yeah, ancestry. Yeah. yeah, and all that. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, the... Uh, so they've been looking into that for some time to establish who we are and I, to some degree I, I guess what school sets we may have but I think I think there's I think there's many layers to it mm -hmm. sure and so if we establish where where we're from um in some ways you could say it doesn't matter whether you come from the Pleiades or whether you come from Sirius or whether you come from Andromeda. Um, it's the, rec the recognition that we are galactic. Right. So, like in my instance, with the, and I mentioned in the, in the last time with the different ray masters and the different ray energies that come through, and what I came to do, it's like those, um, there are all those different frequencies are also different galactic essences as well. So, it may not be about just one. Like some people are absolutely clear that they come from Andromeda. That's it. Other people are really clear they come from the Pleiades and that's it. But there are some of us, it's it's about the galactic identities of different places and the mm -hmm. relationships that we have with different beings in different places. Um, but they, are, they run in our... Um, DNA in our subtle bodies and in our archetypal resonances and in mythologies. So, you know, in psychology, they talk about archetypes and they talk about um, the resonances that we have. And there's levels of that too, so, or layers of that too. So there may be, uh, some people have the teacher archetype, some people have the healer archetype, some people have the doctor archetype you know all different those those right. kind of archetypal frequencies but within the psychological context it's that it's that the unconscious archetypes that are running us and fueling us mm -hmm. a bit like what your dad said like Jung said you know it keeps it keeps coming at you until you realize it and then it hits you over the or before you realize that it, it hits you over the head right and a lot of our unconscious stuff um, is trying to be exposed and helping us to remember who we are, the lifetimes we've had, the things we've done, and the resonances that are important for us to integrate. Because it's all always about integrating, isn't it? Remembering and integrating. And so in the old stories that um, are told around the world, um, things like Noah's Ark, um, all the Greek mythologies, all the Persian mythologies, all the Celtic mythologies, all the Native American, they are all star stories disguised. And so they're archetypal mythical stories that help us access our galactic understanding and our galactic heritage. And if we know that, then every time we, when we, even the, the things down to things like the ugly duckling or the stories that we heard as children that people relate to and respond to, they are tapping into a mythological archetypal aspect of us. Mm. And uh, we can then, um, for example, with the Noah's Ark myth, you know, the story of Noah's Ark and the animals mm -hmm. came two by two and there's been songs sung about it. That's an old story really about the seeding of the planet and the mm -hmm. recreation of humanity and the remembering of the four, again, layers to it. Mm -hmm. And that 
there is a place on the planet where um near turkey where you know they said that the ark has landed and i've actually been in that area and there's certainly energy templates there um but that particular energy template exists in different places on the planet and so if you're in the mediterranean all the mediterranean stories they resonate in the earth. And if you're in the Celtic area, the Celtic stories resonate in the earth. So they're ways of helping us to understand better who we are and what the earth is teaching us and what how the earth helps us get back to our galactic origins. Could Noah's Ark be, just throwing it out there, and you probably have already heard this, or um, a ship, a mothership or something like that with, DNA samples and um, rather than actual animals, you know, DNA, uh, DNA samples with the, the seeding. I have, I have memory of seeding a, a planet. I'm not sure if this, this planet, I feel like it is, but being part of that crew or that group and seeding a planet. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a possibility. Um, mm -hmm. I also, um i have memories of uh things like that uh, i think it's also um connected to uh a, the the name not the name noah but the being that in certain cultures is called noah is called another name in different cultures and so it runs around the world but it's also around losing losing um memory and losing information with the flooding right and then how different beings um, and different consciousness aspects came in to help us remember and so there are beings in every culture uh, uh, the nomo and the um, oanus and different beings who are part of how we've received information and it may be considered architectural information or knowledge and education and writing and all those sorts of things but it's actually that wisdom that we have lost that has come back in so i think it's a combination of the genetic um, seeding and memory that you're talking about but also the information about how what existed and what has been lost and it has in some ways been deliberately hidden you know under esoteric secrets but i think also we've just become so far removed from it in the west that we don't even uh, there's still those questions about whether these mythological stories are real and um whether they're really of any value to us or not and yet they're the, they're kind of like this library of information we just have to figure out how to interpret them yes I love that. Makes so much sense. Definitely. So we are about out of time <laughs> for now. <laughs> We're going to have to chat some more because there's so much we can talk about. Yeah, we could talk about some really interesting things like, yes. yeah, like Definitely. whatever. <laughs> like whatever. I know. I love uh, galactic. Um, galactic conversations and and subjects is is probably my favorite topic right now <laughs> uh, because there's so much going on that um is uh that we we're it's being revealed about the our galactic heritage our galactic selves our galactic connection uh to um to our um and i you know our future selves basically our future is the past our past is the future kind of thing to our um our star brothers and sisters i guess you could say too right our connection yeah i mean there is a lot going on and, and this is that great reveal isn't it you know it's right. a great reveal that's going on it and and for a lot of people it doesn't feel like a great reveal it just feels like shock horror because it, a lot of information yeah. coming out that people didn't even know about before right. um but it is the great reveal and it's the way of clearing the shadow and like exposing everything so that we can go this is who we are really 
this is what we're capable of really and that is yes. just the bottom rung of the ladder that's not even going up the ladder um and uh how amazing is that and how beautiful is all of that and everything else is just story and illusion mm -hmm. and uh we can i think that's also the i think there will there's a a lot of um recognition of uh UAPs as they're now called or UFOs and and obviously there's a lot of um, galactic uh, interactions that people have with different beings uh, so there's a lot of that been going on for some decades but now I think there's a real push to that uh, along with that will be some reveals that won't be quite what they what we think they're going to be yeah. and so trust your intuition trust your discernment if um, if it doesn't feel like it what you're being told it is trust your discernment and your intuition because it's going to be a lot of things re being revealed and being shown that are about breaking the illusion not necessarily showing the truth if that makes thank sense. you i was going to ask you what you, words of wisdom for the audience and breaking the matrix that's what we're doing right yes if you could um if, if you have anything else to share that was that was beautiful if you have anything else to share for the audience that would be great. Well, I guess um, what I think is important is is um, I, with what I, what I mentioned was the um, you know discernment and intuition and because people have been so distracted for such a long period of time, many people don't trust their intuition and they don't trust their discernment. And uh, the intuition can happen like a gut reaction or it can happen. Um, like clunk over the head, <laughs> I've talked about that before. But if if something doesn't feel right to each of us, we can trust that it's not for us, and that doesn't mean it's not for someone else. But it does mean that it's not for us, and we live in a world where we, are, for many, many, many years, we have all been required to act exactly the same and be exactly the same and do exactly the same things. And if we don't do those things, um, the world has become perhaps more generous than it used to be about ostracizing that. But we're in a cycle now where any differences are being highlighted in very interesting ways. But who you are is who you are and nothing and um, nothing can change that except you and the choices that you make. And so every choice that you make, be willing to examine why you're making that choice, how you came to make that choice, what you will feel like depending on the outcome of that choice. So this is not about a right or wrong. This is about recognizing that you are making a choice in every moment about absolutely everything. And some of the choices you're making right now are really, really, really important mm -hmm. about um, your galactic heritage, your galactic consciousness, and how we step forward as a planet and how we step forward as a, as a species. Um, because we're at the pointy end and the pointy end is sharp which means everything matters yeah. perfect nice thank you so much paulina you're welcome it's a pleasure to have the conversations with you and uh, um it's fun <laughs> i agree i agree and um so if you're willing i'd love to have you back again and again and again <laughs> Absolutely, we can talk forever, you know, if people are interested in hearing. Yes, yes, totally. Okay, well, thank you everyone for being here. Really appreciate you and love all of you. And uh, please subscribe, like, all those good things that YouTube uh, needs to get the word out on the videos and comment too, comment on um what you enjoyed about the video or any questions you might have or anything like that and just or share your experience. Paulina's information is in the details below. And I guess that's it. Thank you, Paulina.
Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone. And um, I do hope you've got some questions for next time, because it's always good to answer some questions that people have, because then we know we're being relevant to whatever you're looking for. Yes, yes. And you can email me questions as well if you don't want to put them in the comments yeah. for, for our next conversation with Paulina. Yeah. Absolutely. Bye. All right. Okay. Bye, everyone.